Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com and here to do another random artist feature. Uh, this Today, this week, it's uh, if it's a weekly thing, because I'm seeming to do them every week, it's going to be on the band Dredge, uh, a band out of California, Los Gatos in Northern California somewhat. Um, Location-wise, it's somewhere, I want to say it's north of San Francisco, but anyway, I'm not certain of that. Um, I got into them about... This is 2016. It was about 11 years ago. I heard about them even before that. I remember hearing about them in a comparison to Marillion back around 2002, 2003. Their album, uh, El Cielo, being better than Marillion's new album or whatever it was. It's being a better band than Marillion, which is weird because they're they're different enough. Even though similarities, they're different enough and they're also kind of a... That's like comparing Dream Theater to Rush. They're from different eras, really, more or less. So... Anyway, but they started out in the mid uh, '90s. Uh, they, I always associate their name with rap rock or something like that. But anyway, and I think their early stuff was kind of in that vein, um, sort of the whole rap metal thing, like Limp Bizkit, and there were a bunch of others doing that kind of thing. They put out a, an EP called Conscious, which, looking on Wikipedia here, that was in 1996. Am I right? Yes. Which I think I have heard that in. A, it's sort of like hardcore punk. I don't know how much of the, the rapping actually included in that, but um, anyway, and then they put out uh, another EP, I think it was the next year, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 97, called Orf, which that was, I know, pressed into hard copies, and a lot of the people that love Dredge, the collectors that go back way back, really liked that EP, and also would just die to find a copy of it. Um, uh, you know, but you'd be hard pressed to try to find a copy of it right now. So that was '97, and then the year after, they put out their their first full length called uh, Light Motif, which I, I got a bunch that I can show here. I have they're two different copies, and that was in <clears throat> according to Wikipedia and some other sources, 1998. I want to say that this version uh, came out in '99, but. Um, you know, I'm not sure. They Obviously, the artwork's different. And then I have the vinyl, too, which was pressed. And I think I picked this up, I want to say, around 2009, 2010, something like that. Even though this says 2001, interesting enough. Um, but, yeah, this is a uh, this is a, their debut album, Light Motif, L-E, as you can see, L-E-I-T-O, or L-E-I-T-M-O-T-I-F. Um, and it's a concept album. As you can see, I had the guys sign it. It's a concept album like uh, <clears throat> a lot of Dredge's albums are. Um, there's a story with it, which, ironically, when I first got this album and got into the band, I didn't even realize the booklet with the story was, like, hidden in this part right here. Because <laughs> I didn't even realize it came with a booklet when I first bought it. Let me just pull it out real quickly. But um, musically, Dredge, for those who've never heard them, um, at this point, they, in 1998, 99, uh, their music was sort of, they were going away from the hardcore punk and more kind of doing experimental, environmental, and progressive, uh, but I always thought of this being, having a, a, a relatively strong influence from the band Tool. Um, I'm really sad about the fact this thing came off, but um, there's that, that version of it. Um, and I think the artwork, the artwork, the, uh, the booklet, that was nice. The booklet on this one is a little different, so it's like if you're a collector like myself, there's different versions of, of this album, especially this album, Light Motif or Late Motif, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But, um, yeah, it's, it's sort of like Tool, but then it's sort of its own thing. There's, there's samples, there's, like I said, it is a concept album about a guy basically on like a journey, like a spiritual journey. Um, uh, but as far as the music go, the first song is known as Symbol Song, if I'm not mistaken. They used to use a symbol, they just count that, that symbol right there, which is like the dredge symbol became known as. That's one of my favorites. Um, Penguins in the Desert, Yadahazi is a song they've played live. They've had like a, as a live staple for ages. Um, there's moments that the moments of dynamics with the heavy riffs and sort of the kind of melancholy or atmospheric parts. Um, it's not a real long album. It's like 45 minutes, and then the last song 
which is known as 90 hour sleep or movement five it goes on for like 20 minutes but i don't really count that as like the main length of the album the album's over after about 45 minutes so anyway it was a culmination of a number of years of works so i think they formed they're i think the same age as me or maybe a year year old uh younger they're they're all in their late 30s or 40s now so they graduated from high school and they went the four guys in the band which are all original members um formed in when they were in high school in like 1993 1994 so this came out five six years later <clears throat> all right let's move on so then in 2002 they released what i consider their definitive work and many people el cielo which is um you know you, you look at this you look at uh leitmotif it, it's really like art rock in a lot of sense uh, they use a lot of dynamics and um use paintings and of course when their concerts and have paintings and their t-shirts and all this stuff but um look at the, this is a phenomenal gatefold vinyl that came out this was around this like a year or two after the late motif vinyl and i actually end up seeing this sometimes at stores like half price and so i've picked up my share of copies of the actual compact disc it's just a, it's just this is one of my favorite records of all time el cielo um it's another concept album about People that are dealing with sleep paralysis somewhat. A um, number of stories was influenced by um, the experience of people had sleep paralysis and um, talking about their stories. But um, let me just show the vinyl here. It's just your 80, 180 gram. But uh, actually, I have a copy of, looking at the artwork and the, on the labels, I know I have a copy of... of uh, <laughs> that artwork too. There was an alternate version or an original version of this El Cielo that what that didn't look like this. That looked different. Um, but uh, that that CD, that compact disc is somewhere I don't know at the moment. But um, I guess talking about El Cielo and why it's one of my favorite albums of all time, and it really was the album that made me uh, really see the band significantly different than I would have before or, or since. Is that it's really, it really is, tells a, a wonderful kind of atmospheric story. Um, and I guess, as weird as it sounds, it was discovered a couple years later by one of the members of Circus Survive, I want to say Anthony Green, the singer, when they were on tour with Dredge or just being fans of Dredge, how when you watch the Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the Jim Carrey, Kate Winslet movie, it syncs up. All these weird stuff talk about uh, subconscious... Uh, experiences and relationships although obviously that movie came out after this album because this came out in 2002 that movie came out in 2004 so there's they didn't write the album being influenced by the movie or vice versa I don't think but um, you know the canyon behind here is the closing track on this album it's a great sort of very atmospheric epic closer and they play it like every concert now it seems like unless they're doing a special concert they play it um, as a, like a, an encore piece um, but just a, I love this album. Brushstrokes, um, what's the first song called? Left for, uh, <laughs> I can't even read that. Same old rolled, that's just like a sample. Same old rolled, sands in, triangle, um, uh, con convalescence, one song I always love, the lyrics in that, talking about, uh, it has that like, yeah, that little like rhythm at the beginning. Um, I want to say the, the song they talk, talking about having a modest house, but that may be actually same old role. Uh, all we need is a modest house and a modest neighborhood, that kind of thing. Scissor lock of the room. Of the room is very rhythmic. Um, it only took a day. Woe is me. The sax part is just, uh, terrific, just terrific. The crescendo at the end of that, it's like f falling down a waterfall. I always think of that, uh, when the water comes, I will overflow, you know. But it's definitely a record that's heard, that's experienced best live, or all at once, rather. Uh, and live, actually. I got to see this live and late motif back in 1990, or 2006, out in Santa Cruz. They did two special shows, two of the best concerts I've ever seen. They played the entire album, Lit Motif, on the first night, and they played the entire uh, LCL of the second night, so... But moving on, um, yeah, I've talked for already 10 minutes about, um, in fact, let me go on to part two. 